Hey YouTube, it's ICU. Welcome to the 218th episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors, and Happy New Year. All right, to start off, I wanted to say to preface, this week's episode is going to be slightly different than usual, and the primary reason for that is because this is a New Year's special, so I'm going to go over everything major that happened in 2014 related to jailbreaking and what we can expect moving forward in the new year, 2015, from not only jailbreaking, but also Apple, as well as iOS and iDevice-related topics. And I'm also going to even go beyond that and discuss what we can expect from Taiji, the latest jailbreak team, on the jailbreak scene and their forthcoming Mac utility. So to start off, let's go ahead and rewind a little bit to December of 2013. So yeah, I know it's not 2014, but it's kind of the tail end of 2013 and it will kind of set the scene for things and it will bring us forward into 2014 and even 2015 as we move on. So on December 22nd, 2013, the Evaders, the previously prominent jailbreak team, released their untethered jailbreak utility for iOS 7.0.2. Four. So like I said, that kind of sets the scene for things because guys, keep in mind that iOS 7 was released in September of 2013 and from that time until December 22nd of 2013, there wasn't a jailbreak utility. Even though the iPhone 5S was already released at the time, which was the latest iPhone model, again, no one could jailbreak aside from the evaders who were perfecting their jailbreak utility for again, release to the masses. And it's also kind of interesting because at the time, Taiji approached the evaders to kind of bundle in a third-party Chinese distribution platform into their Chinese version of the utility. So Evasion 7 for Chinese-based devices. And they actually did that. There was a monetary exchange, or at least there was going to be one before a public uproar. And then the evaders kind of stepped back from everything. They declined the deal and they removed Taiji software for devices jailbroken in China. It's kind of interesting to think about though. So put a pin in that and I'll get back to it in just a second when we start to discuss Pangu and Taiji. So, from iOS 7.0.4, Apple actually released 7.0.5 for certain non-US iPhone models, followed by 7.0.6. Neither of the firmwares patched Evasion 7, and it looked like everything was going fine until iOS 7.1 dropped, and then Evasion 7 could officially be considered patched, and there wasn't a jailbreak utility. So from then on, following iOS 7.1's release, there wasn't really much happening on the jailbreak scene, and there weren't really too many iOS releases either. Once Apple released iOS 7.1.1, it appeared as though there wasn't going to be a jailbreak utility until June of 2014, when a new team dubbed Pangu released their all new untethered jailbreak utility for full support on iOS 7.1.1, as well as all devices. And at the time, it seemed kind of ludicrous because the public was under the impression that the vulnerabilities that Pangu exploited to achieve an untethered jailbreak on 7.1.1 would go to waste, Apple would patch it, and that would be it. It. However, Apple released iOS 7.1.2, and guess what? They didn't close the vulnerabilities, and Pangu was able to jailbreak 7.1.2 up until iOS 8's release. So from the time Pangu released the first iteration of their utility in June until September 17th, when iOS 8.0 was released, the latest public firmware could be fully jailbroken, untethered on any device. And that's definitely incredible and it's seen as a turning point because from then on, the latest public firmware has been able to be jailbroken because after iOS 8.0 was issued, obviously it patched Pangu, but the team didn't waste any time. It only took them approximately a month to ready their Pangu 8 jailbreak utility and on about the 20th of October, so again, about a month, Pangu released their latest and greatest jailbreak utility which functioned on 8.0 up to 8.1. However, at the time, it merely named enabled SSH access for developers to kind of upgrade their tweaks and it wasn't really intended for the masses because of course it wasn't bundled with Cydia. Sarek didn't have an adequate period of time to upgrade his creation, again Sarek being the creator of Cydia, so that's why Cydia wasn't bundled in with it from its initial release. However, following a number of subsequent updates, everything slowly started to become stable. However, for those of you who don't know, Pangu is a Chinese-based dev team, and similar to Taiji, who attempted to fund the evaders for the creation of Evasion 7, Pangu is funded by a third-party Chinese company with other monetary interests in jailbreaking. So, in its initial release, Pangu 8 was exclusively Chinese, and of course, both Pangu
Pangu 7 and Pangu 8 did come bundled with a similar piece of Chinese software. And of course, the users always had their choice as to whether they wanted to install said Chinese software. Fast forward to November 17th of 2014, and Apple issued iOS 8.1.1 to the general public, which did effectively patch Pangu 8. So the tool was no longer capable of jailbreaking the latest public firmware, again being 8.1.1 at the time. And then about two weeks later, on November 29th, 2014, Taiji made their grand reappearance onto the jailbreak scene, and this time, instead of attempting to fund the creation of a jailbreak utility, they actually issued one of their own. And what's most surprising is that this tool was supposedly created by one individual. We now know his name. He goes by the name of XN. I'm not exactly sure if that's how you would pronounce it, but again, just two letters, XN, and it is called Taiji. That's the official pronunciation for it. And again, it was able to jailbreak 8.1.1. And of course, following that, Apple issued 8.1.2 on December 9th, which surprisingly didn't patch the jailbreak. And that's the latest public firmware now as of recording this video. So that kind of brings us up to speed on jailbreak utilities. As of now, the latest public firmware being 8.1.2 is able to be jailbroken via Taiji because the firmware was merely introduced to rectify a small complications with ringtones purchased directly on an iDevice. So 8.1.2 can be jailbroken right now. And I will have complete links to things that I think are relevant down below in the more info. So just be sure to check out those videos. But if you want more details on jailbreak, Breaking, if you want to learn how to jailbreak your device, or if you want to find out what you can do once you're already jailbroken, I'll have some of my top tweaks videos listed there. Now, I also want to talk about iOS 8.1.3, 8.2, and kind of moving forward. So there were rumors that recently circulated suggesting that Apple is indeed testing iOS 8.1.3. Mac rumors reported that they did see a slight influx of internal devices from Apple visiting their site, suggesting that they were running 8.1.3. 1.3. Now this has happened in the past and Mac Rumors has been extremely accurate in predicting various releases. So it is definitely possible that Apple will release 8.1.3. The news did hit before the holiday season. So it was expected that Apple would kind of take the time off from iOS releases. But we do know that there are several issues with iOS 8.1.x, primarily 8.1.2 as it's the latest public firmware. So we could see 8.1.3 as we move into the new year and it may very well patch time. IG. However, the team is committed to jailbreaking and they did state that they plan on having surprises for the public in every subsequent iOS release and that's their official statement. However, seeing as 8.2 is on the horizon scheduled for release in what will probably be early 2015 alongside the forthcoming Apple Watch, it's possible that the team may not hold true to their promise and that they may wait until 8.2 drops. So if you have yet to jailbreak, just be sure to do so now on 8.1.2. Don't hold out. And if you're a Mac owner and you own a Mac and you don't have a Windows-based PC, I'm going to go over a few developments shortly, so just be sure to stick around for that. But again, I definitely recommend jailbreaking now because not even if 8.1.3 drops, but when 8.2 does, the jailbreak will undoubtedly be patched. And then from there, it's a matter of time as to when a new jailbreak utility will be issued. But in the interim, if you were to upgrade, you would definitely be locked out of jailbreaking. So upgrade to 8.1.2 now while you can jailbreak and stay where you're at until the teams issue new jailbreak utilities and I create my jailbreak tutorials, which of course will be immediately following said releases. Also, according to some past rumors, which happen to be right about Apple getting up to iOS 8.2, which hasn't really been done in any major iOS release for years, it's possible that the company may indeed release iOS 8.3 in 2015 as well. We have no clue what the firmware will entail at this point in time. However, we can likely expect major improvements as the minor updates are typically similar to 8.1.2. Now, as for my channel, from the last episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors, which was actually a while ago, I did take two weeks off of recording the series, just in light of the holidays, I have released a number of videos, including two jailbreak updates, both for iOS 8.1.3 as well as 8.2, the forthcoming release, and two top Cydia Tweaks videos, and one video highlighting OXO3, an absolutely incredible multitasking tweak, and I did create one video on free app life as well. So briefly, to talk about free app life, for those of you that don't know, you can download the app from freeapplife.com. From there, you can 
download other apps inside of Free App Life to earn points and then redeem said points for awesome prizes, including paid app store apps, gift cards, and electronic devices. So now the service is at the point where I felt it was ready to reshare with you guys, my viewers. I did create another in-depth video on it, which I will have linked to down below in the more info. And we're actually holding an all new giveaway in celebration of the holidays and 2015. We're going to be giving away a brand new iPhone 6 or an iPhone 6 Plus. It will be the winner's choice. Whichever one they want, they will indeed receive. And to enter, it's extremely simple. Just be sure to follow the procedure outlined in the aforementioned video covering the service. And now next up, I also wanted to talk about a recent interview with Taiji that was publicized and get into the Mac iteration of the utility. So an XN was asked about a Mac iteration of Taiji, again, being the developer that I mentioned previously, who stated that he's the sole developer of the latest Taiji jailbreak utility. We can't expect a Mac version. However, he said, quote, we have started already, but we're short of people, so no accurate release time yet. So that's actually pretty important because seeing as Apple is likely prepping 8.1.3, and if not that firmware, then definitely 8.2, which will undoubtedly patch Taiji, I definitely recommend that you jailbreak now, even if you do own a Mac. You can actually get Windows set up either via a virtual environment or through boot camp on your Mac, which is actually native. It's built straight into Mac OS X or OS X. It's incredibly simple. There are tutorials online for both. I definitely recommend taking advantage of that. And if you can't or you don't want to for whatever reason, then try to get your hands on a Windows-based PC. Maybe your friend or family member has one. Just be sure to get it because it doesn't appear that Taiji will release a new jailbreak utility or at least a Mac adaptation of their Taiji jailbreak 1.2.0 utility to jailbreak 8.1.2 completely on tethered natively on Mac OS X. So it's absolutely crucial to understand. I know a lot of you have been holding off on jailbreaking 8.1.x until you can do so natively on Mac. However, you might not want to because again, Apple could release a jailbreak patching firmware at any point in time in early 2015. And with that said, I also just wanted to say that I have a number of updates planned for my channel in general. So just be sure to stay tuned. I'm really excited myself personally for 2015. And I think we can expect a lot in the world of jailbreak because if you've taken anything away from this video, it's that jailbreak development has picked up in pace. It's not slowed down, which was actually what was predicted by a number of industry watchers. Once the jailbreak scene was kind of taken over by Chinese-based dev teams, we have seen frequent and pretty incredible updates. And that actually kind of loops back to what I was talking about previously, when the evaders felt extreme pressure from the jailbreak community to reverse the deal that they had made with Taiji and remove the third-party Chinese distribution platform that they had bundled into the Chinese iteration of Evasion 7. Now, we have Pangu, we have Taiji, and both of the jailbreak utilities, including Pangu 8 and 7, actually include similar services and are funded by questionable means, at least for the Chinese version of the utilities. So what do you guys think? It's definitely an interesting and kind of taboo situation that we're in right now. Do you think that a year ago, the evaders should have accepted funds from Taiji? Let me know down below in the comment section or on Best Tech Info, and I hope you guys have had an awesome 2014. I look forward to seeing you guys in 2015. And as we move forward from there, of course, Apple is planning on releasing the Apple Watch. We can also expect to see some Mac updates in 2015, as well as updates, of course, to the iPad and the iPhone. Apple will likely release the S series or the S edition of the iPhone 6. So probably the iPhone 6S and iPhone 6S Plus. Again, I will keep you guys covered along the way for absolutely everything, not only jailbreak related, but also related to various Apple developments be it software or hardware. And I really do hope you guys like this video as well as my videos in general. And if you guys like this video and you're interested in my iPhone 6 and 6 Plus giveaway, just be sure to rate it up, leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section and check out the video coverage that I have on Free App Life, again, down below, because from there you can find explicit details on how to enter the giveaway itself. And if you guys wanna be updated more often, such as when I release new videos and cover various things, such as jailbreak and Apple Watch related topics, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google Plus. Follow me on Instagram at ICUID and subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.